Hello again and welcome back to another episode of opening up parts and looking at them underneath the microscope. This video will be a continuation of the previous video where I opened up an old Sylvania integrated circuit. If you remember from that previous video, I found this old circuit board on eBay and I opened up two of these parts to see if I could find out what they were. In that video, I was unable to identify the parts, so I did the most logical thing I could think of, I bought more. I'll start with the SG222, which unlike the previous parts, is actually in this Sylvania databook that I found on bitsavers.org. Here we can see the part number SG222, which maps to a quad two input NAND slash NOR gate along with a very nice block diagram that shows the pinout of the part. Let's open this part up and see if we can trace the circuit inside. In order to remove the lid, I'm using hot air to melt the solder, and then all I have to do is pry it apart. Inside is a silicon chip similar to the first one, but definitely different. If we zoom in with the microscope, we can start to analyze this one just like before. At first glance, this chip appears to be divided into four different quadrants like this one highlighted here. First, I'll map all the letters included in the block diagram from the datasheet. Next, since I know that J is ground, I'll trace that out, followed by VCC, which is assigned to pin D. You may have noticed some red and green sections that are slightly different colored, and that's because they're not actually VCC and ground. They're connected through resistors, which are marked as yellow. We can shift our focus to just this quadrant, which now has all of the transistors highlighted in white. The datasheet has a nice cutaway diagram of the BJT epitaxial transistors used in this design. We can highlight the N material in green on this diagram, and then we'll know that the P material must be here in red to form an NPN transistor. Since the base always connects to the middle region, we can mark it here, followed by the emitter and the collector. We can then translate this information to all of the transistors on the circuit. Before we can do that though, we need to address the elephant in the room. This transistor right here. This transistor looks much different than the other ones, and that's because it's a dual emitter transistor. I'll start by outlining the shape of the transistor and I'll name it Q1. Next, I'll highlight the two nets on the right hand side, which are the emitters E1 and E2. Similarly, I can highlight the center section, which is the base of the transistor. Lastly, I can highlight the net on the left, which is the collector of the transistor. With all of this in mind that we just talked about, we can label up all of the rest of the devices on the circuit. You can see the next two transistors control the bases of the final output transistors, which will either connect the output to VCC or ground. Next, I wanted to try and simulate this circuit to see if it is in fact a NAND. If we want to properly simulate the circuit, it's important that we assign some resistors that are roughly correct. To do this, I took the most normal looking resistor and assigned it the arbitrary value of 1 kilo ohm. I then determined how many times this resistor fit into the other resistors and either used a series or parallel resistance calculator to determine their values. With all of this information, we can boot up my favorite simulating software, LT Spice, and simulate the circuit. There didn't appear to be a dual emitter transistor in the basic library, so I just simulated it with two different NPMs stacked on top of each other. I then went through all the options for inputs, starting at 0 and 0, going to 0 and 1, 1, 0, and finally ending with 1, 1, and noted all the values. I don't want to get too much into transistor theory in this video, but everything does seem to be simulating like an AND. I checked with the datasheet and the values that I'm simulating seem close, but there's only one way to find out for sure. Let's simulate the circuit in real life. I hooked up the part to my benchtop power supply, supplied it with 5 volts, and these are the results. All of the voltages measured within spec, and it definitely is an AND. The datasheet lists SG220, 221, 222, 223, all as being a quad 2 input NAND slash NOR gate. So I opened up the SG223 to see if it looks any different than the SG222 that we just looked at. Let me know if you can spot the difference. As far as I can tell, the SG222 and 223 are identical, besides being a different color of course. I tried to include a few measurements on some of these photographs so that you can get a reference of just how small these chips are, but by modern standards they're actually quite large. 
I did notice this oddity that is present in all four circuits, which appears to be a resistor that goes nowhere. It was also interesting to compare the differences between the two different chips. This one looks much cleaner. I did notice a few places around the circuit that didn't appear to go anywhere, and I'm not sure if they have any function. If you think they have a function, let me know. Let's see if we can apply what we've learned about analyzing the SG222 to the previously unknown circuit from the last video. If you recall from the previous video, this part didn't have a discernible part number on the lid, but did have 220 on the die, which led me to believe initially that this was a quad 2 input NAND gate. This is definitely not the case, as there are three identical circuits on this chip. We'll focus on one and look at it a little bit closer. Similar to before, I'll start by marking the ground and power nets, and then mark all the transistors. As far as I can tell, Q7 also contains a diode. Next, I'll highlight all of the resistors. Lastly, I'll highlight some segments with other colors so it looks pretty. Once again, we can pop over to LT Spice and try to simulate the circuit. After simulating, this part appears to be a triple three input NOR gate. I went ahead and made this nice simple for it. That being said, the only way to know if the simulation is correct is to try it out in circuit. So once again, I hooked it up to the benchtop power supply and I was able to confirm that these three circuits are in fact three input NOR gates. I did run into a little bit of trouble until I finally realized that the VCC wire bond had come loose, so I fixed it with a little bit of solder. But that's it! Mystery solved! Finally figured out what this part is, and perhaps I learned a little bit more in the process. I had a lot of fun trying to analyze these circuits, but it definitely is a very tedious process. This video took over 100 hours to put together, between all the filming, editing, circuit diagrams, drawings, and especially voiceover. That all being said, I'd love to make this a series and do more of these in the future. I think the next episode will start with SG221, and like I always say, you never know what you're going to find on eBay. Thanks for watching, now let's go open up some more chips.